Hi, Melanie. Hi, how are you? I'm pretty good. Um, so for those folks that don't know you, why don't you give yourself an introduction? Sure. So my name is Melanie Manuel, and I'm the chef and owner of Celeste Restaurant. Where is it? It's um, on the east side of Milwaukee, off Lafayette and Farwell. So everyone's talking about it. It's generally the only thing we can talk about. Um, life is different because of the COVID crisis. Tell me how you are responding to that. Sure, um, in many different ways. Um, I, like many other people, am checking the news constantly and also trying not to check the news <laughs> constantly. But um, as a business owner, I think it's really important to kind of find that space where information makes sense to you, um, but you still give yourself time to focus on other things like your business and taking care of yourself and your employees. So. I'm working on finding a balance with all of that. I'm working on um, being really responsive to what my staff needs, what my community needs, what I need, um, and just trying to make more thoughtful decisions than ever um, that make sense in a larger context. So as soon as the orders to close non-essential businesses came, um, you had to make a decision as a restaurant owner whether you were going to continue serving and, and offer carry out and delivery or if you were going to shut down. Talk me through how you went about that process. Sure. Um, we actually closed a few days before the order. Um, my general manager uh, was really, really concerned about the way things were looking. Of course, now we have so much more information, but then things were just really starting to emerge. emerge. And I remember, you know, distinctly the moment in which um, it all hit me. We had brunch um, and the dining room was full and my servers were busy moving through the dining room, serving people, helping people. And I just thought, wow, we can't do this whether we're allowed to or not. So we decided to close the following week and uh, close the dining room the following week and just two or three days after that the orders were passed in, in the state. Um, so we really quickly had to pivot and thank goodness we sort of, and we didn't know this at the time, right? But we already had a pretty robust takeout system in place. We had delivery through a third party in place. Um, and we often have people get takeout, maybe people who have little kids or because our dining room is a little smaller. Um, sometimes people get takeout because we're so busy on Friday nights, you know, they can't get in or what have you. So I think people already thought of us as a place where they could get takeout and that accidentally played to our favor. So we immediately scaled our menu down to make it more manageable. We went through our um, POS system and looked up our highest selling items and scaled back about 20 to 25%. We um, luckily were able to keep all our staff, which I'm really, really happy about so far, uh, but we did have to cut everyone's hours. Um, so we implemented um, some really clear safety systems. For example, we locked our dining room, so no one's been in in about a month. Um, and then we put a table outside for people to, um, for us to drop the bag off and then the customer to pick it up so it's completely contactless. And um, I think that gave customers a lot of confidence to come get carry out and it kept our staff, you know, um, at arm's length from everybody else. So for a while we were just taking it day by day, every day checking in and saying, is this still making sense? Now we're kind of in a week by week mode now that everything's settled in, it's been about a month, right? Um, so I think what's next is how do we take this month by month and, you know, even two or three months out and make it make sense? Melanie, for folks in most industries and most business types, the decision to build a, a business is one fueled by passion. Uh, but in moments like this, we find ourselves having to make very rational, reasonable business decisions that sometimes contradict what our, our passionate desires would have us do. Can you share with me kind of how you're reconciling what you'd love to be doing versus what you're you're choosing to do as a responsible business owner 
Yeah, that's all very true. <laughs> it rings very true to me. Um, the main reason why I got into the food industry is because the food was in and to a means and that is to serve people and spend time with people and provide them with the opportunity to have special moments like a birthday or an anniversary um, to share in creating a memory with someone. And I can't really do that the same way without a dining room. I mean, we had someone rent our dining room out and propose do a you know a surprise proposal to his girlfriend and you know things like that aren't happening right now um so I think I've just tried to keep things really simple um in terms of my expectations for myself we uh we're just about to launch a really serious um dinner party program we've been doing private dinner parties since we opened where we sell tickets to specialized events collaborative dinners, um, dinners that are really focused on a particular theme and what have you. And we had already planned out a whole calendar, including like a street party this summer, which we were really excited about, a fun, you know, fundraisers. And we, we've had to scrap that um, and just focus on really simple things like, hey, people want to feel normal, come grab a old fashioned cocktail kit, make drinks, tonight, whether it's a Monday night or a Saturday night, you know, and surprisingly, and this was a huge surprise to me, um, people, some people are seeing what restaurants are doing as a community service. Some people work crazy shifts or they have little kids at home and cooking is just sort of out of the question or getting takeouts a way to, to treat themselves at a time when they're feeling really overwhelmed or stressed. And that was a huge surprise to me. People were emailing us saying, oh my gosh, thank you for all that you do. I'm like, we're not doing anything special. <laughs> um, so those, that's been, I, I try to look at things through that lens. So you, you bring up an important point, um, which is managing the stress. Uh, owning a business, operating a business is always stressful. What are you doing to take care of yourself to navigate this extraordinary time? Yeah, so we cut our hours a little bit, and that enables me to get home at 9 or 9.30 instead of 11 or 11.30. <laughs> so it's afforded me a little bit more sleep sometimes. Um, I think a lot of people right now are finding or trying to find ways to de-stress in very simple ways. Nobody's getting their nails done. Nobody's getting their hair done. People are taking walks, and that's what I'm doing. I'm just trying to get outside every single day. Um, I'm trying to eat well. Um, so that I just feel a little more balanced. And I'm just trying to check in with my staff. You know, we um, check in with them every week. Hey, how are you guys doing? Need to talk about anything? Um, just because in addition to always feel like, feeling like a team, now we're quarantining together, right? Because we work together. So those are the only people I'm around and I'm the only person they're around. So I think it's really important that we maintain a really healthy community space, a mentally healthy community space too. So I'm not going to ask you to make predictions because uh, the last few weeks have proven impossible to predict, but I, I will ask you to share your vision for what the near term future could look like for all of us, for business owners, for your customers and for Milwaukee. Sure, I'll just speak um, based on the information we all have now, <laughs> which has been changing, right? Week to week, sometimes day to day. Um, I think it will be a long time before restaurants anyway will get back to what we call normal, where people will sit and dine in and you know we'll have reservations all night and places will be packed. I just don't personally see that happening anytime soon. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's unfortunate, but I'm kind of in a space where I, I feel like, okay, like you said, rational, rational time. <laughs> this is how it's going to be for a while. What's next? What can I do to support my staff, to support Milwaukeeans, my customers? Um, and that's sort of what I'm trying to focus on. Uh, I think perhaps, hopefully, we can take this as an opportunity to make things better. Um, to talk about how we can support our small businesses so that they're sustainable, 
to look at the tax structuring system federally, <laughs> um, to look at how um, some of the licensing um, works out. The insurance agent, you know, no one got any insurance money for this. Nobody's insurance covered stuff like this. So what's that about, right? So sort of look at restructuring how um, small business fit into our fits into our lives in America and what what it means for us. And you know, those people are our neighbors and our friends and our relatives. And how can we make sure we can take care of them so they can take care of us? So let's talk a little bit about that optimism. Um, and your resilience, you know, oftentimes moments like this foster innovation, foster inventions. How have you made the most productive use of this moment? Well, um, about six months ago, um, well, I spoke to you, of course, um, and then another one of my business mentors, Athena from Wibic, and then a friend and customer of mine, um, Michael, and you know, I sort of felt like overall business is going really well and I'm really happy with the way things are headed and I'm sort of a planner. So what's next? I feel like I have to plant the seeds now for a year or two down the road. And um, I sat down with my GM and we talked about, you know, different avenues the business can go in. And so right now what I'm deciding to focus on really is um, developing my consulting and branding wing of my business. Um, I started working on a blog and I got some recipes published online. I've been editing my cookbook um, and I'm really interested in providing um, people with a platform and a community to connect with what I do, which is um, what I think is very accessible plant-based eating and lifestyle, stuff that's fun, um, stuff that can be both accessible and challenging. Um, and I hope to launch my website soon. I started consulting with a um, large chain restaurant recently. They're going to be putting some vegan items on their menu, which I'm really excited about. And I'm hoping to continue to grow um, those connections as well. I'd love to hear that. Give me a moment of inspiration. What would you like to share with uh, this audience we have? How would you help them feel better about what we're going through, about what's lying ahead? Well, I think it helps to know that everybody is dealing with it too. You know, none of us are alone in this and I don't think anyone is in a vacuum and no one expects you <laughs> not to reach out and say, I'm scared or I'm worried or I'm anxious or I'm sad. I think those are all really valid feelings. And I think it's also valid to feel a little bit of happiness and joy sometimes too. Like, well, heck, I'm not taking home a paycheck, but guess what, this yoga I'm doing right now, this walk I'm taking, this TV show I'm watching, this is free and this is time. And we can't get the time back. So how can we spend the time? And it doesn't have to be productive in the traditional sense of the word, right? That's important, but I think being with ourselves and being with those feelings and working through them is just as important and productive too, because we are gonna get on the other side of this. Um, and who are we gonna be? when we arrive there. I love that answer. Um, you know, as we wrap, I guess, would you like to make any recommendations? What have you been watching, listening to, reading? <laughs> um, I'm reading the newspaper a little bit. <laughs> I feel like my mom. Um, but it's a really nice way to support our, you know, our local newspaper. I try to get takeout once a week. Um, but of course I'm cooking all the time. Um, but maybe just, I don't know, some advice that someone gave me once when I was going through a hard time is um, chop wood and carry water. It's in a Zen koan, you know, sometimes keeping busy with small mundane tasks um, distracts the mind and does the body good. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that, with a little, a little distraction, whether that's hard work or a little bit of play. So finding space in that, I think we can all use a little of it. Fantastic. Melanie, you're the best. Thank you for talking to me. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Elmer. Yeah, this is great. So I hope you can reopen soon, and I hope that we get through this safely and with all, all our health. And I'm looking forward to like sitting in your dining room or actually sitting outside your restaurant and enjoying something delicious. Some bang bang broccoli. <laughs> Amen. <laughs>